Welcome to uh, my demo. It's going to be basically uh, chasing, texturing, and uh, pushing a small bowl. In the olden days when Dan owned Colorado Water Jet, I could get blanks like this very reasonable, but it's not reasonable anymore. Um, so I try to find drops. But uh, this is the blank. It's quarter inch. And I don't even remember the dimension of it. But the idea, what I've discovered over the years, is I do everything flat. I upset the edge like on this one. I chase the design in it. And then I use a pusher to push it into a round uh, disc. And you can use almost anything for a disc. Uh, we did one, this is just a piece of pipe. This was for a very large bowl I did, uh, and I rolled that over at Dave's and then welded it. But uh, these are the pushers I've made. This one just pushes a round spot in the bottom. On this one, I wanted the flower to be uh, convex, so I made a concave pusher so it left a rounded center. Uh, this was an experiment and it worked out pretty good. Um, I had Dan Waterjet, my little bear, uh, favorite little bear out of a piece of uh, 4140. And then I uh, took it and pushed it forward and welded it in and then put it on a, a stem. So as it pushes, it gives me the rounded flat bottom, but it also imparts the bear into the center. So it's just a little Hopi bear talking. This one is the energy is coming from the nadir up towards the heavens and then they have ones where the energy comes from the heavens down to the the earth nadir as they say. Um, not heat treat the bear and it is held up very nicely. I did round the outer edge so that it didn't Put a cut into it. I did that on all of these. So I have my blank. You've probably seen one of these. It's a center finder. Uh, Steric makes these. Mitatoyo makes them. Hung Chow makes them. I don't know if that's politically correct. But you can go like so and it will give you a center point. Now I, these are out of a hard drive, a large hard drive, and whenever, if you ever have to destroy one, if you can save these out of it, but it's a magnet, so you can set this and look through the hole and find the center, and this one I have laid out, but uh, then you can set up a compass and uh there's a hole where the pivot went, and you can use this to lay out your design that you're going to do. And you don't have to put a ding in the bottom of the, the center to get your center point. Handy little deal. When you push with a flat pusher like this, it gives you a flat bottom that will sit. If you want a, a bowl that's going to have feet on it, and you want it rounded, then you make a rounded pusher, and this will give you a rounded bottom bowl. But then you have to have feet or a ring or something on the bottom that it sits in. How did you make the pusher, Scott? Uh, the dome for the pusher? Basically, I took a piece of metal and I pushed it into one of these rings, and watched it so that it didn't bottom out. And this one was actually the one I used to make Leroy Jacobs mm -hmm. uh, urn. So uh, I needed a bigger one, so I made, took my original and pushed it into this piece of half inch. And that gave me this. And it's this has pushed many bowls and it's getting a little chafed, but it's not bad. It'll, this one's made so it engages and it won't hit the bottom. Um, so once you've got the layout, 
then I would start with the chasing. So we'll move over to the treadle hammer. I mean the uh, fly press. Not the... When, just a little hint, if you have a fly press, you want to protect the ways in the screw. So I use an old shirt. It works fantastic just to keep all the grinding dust and schmutz uh, off of it. Um, this is a little deal I showed in the demo at Dan's, but it allows me to rotate a disc. Um, and uh, that allows me to get a real even chasing line roller that I made. These are uh, off-feed rollers uh, that came from a big uh, warehouse where they there was a, like 30 of these going across one roll and they can put the brakes on it and make a box turn. That's how Amazon runs stuff around. But I just uh, um, machined uh, the place it pushes on through the center of the bearing on th this and then uh, made it so it was as close to the surface as I could but would still spin easily. And then this one's basically just on a pivot with a spring. So when you put the roll in, it holds it. But I found if you turn towards yourself, it'll very often crawl away. But if you go away from yourself, it for some reason it stays. Because you're pushing into the two stable lit, fixed true. points. Yeah. Whereas going the opposite direction, you're pushing against the spring-loaded point. Yeah. Very good. But it's, you know, it's my typical kind of hokey where I clamp everything because I don't want to have to have some screw holes or something to adjust it. But if you buy a few hundred of these guys, you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so on this one, I'm going to chase it around moving just little bits at a time so that it, I like it to show the edge of the uh, where the gear foot cut into the steel. I like that skull look. Um, if you wanted it to be super smooth you can just go smaller turns and you won't get the little scallop look. This can be quite boring to watch, I'm sure. I've made my circle. Now what I want to do is reverse chase it. So I loosen the, the deer foot and I turn it 180 degrees. And then uh, if you'll see that it's not quite enough. It looks, it'll be good on this one. You want, want to do a test for a second to make sure that it's not turned, because if it's turned, it won't make a nice radius. It'll make a real choppy. If the tool's not aligned properly, you're saying? Yes. If the tool's sitting cockeyed, I've got it exactly in line with where it's going to hit on this circle. But if you have it cocked, it's going to leave choppy corners and it looks real ratty, I think. But it, if you do get some of those choppy corners, you can just go back around it usually and, and uh, tune it up. If, it, if this tends to drag, if you put a little water underneath it, it'll just turn very easily.
Now I used to do this by hand on the treadle hammer, holding the uh, gear foot, but it doesn't give me as nice as concentric curves. Um, this may be too mechanized for traditionalists, but when you're doing a, a bowl that you want to sell at a fair and you want to get a reasonable price for it, um, you want to be able to crank it out pretty fast. Okay, this is a little homemade item I call the Acme Holdomatic. Dan calced it uh, that it puts out about 7,000 pounds pressure, but it's I use it for edging. You have to be real careful not to get your fingers in the wrong spot because it will mash it. But I set this in, and these are just plastic wedges you can get it. Uh, Lowe's, I won't even use the HD word, uh, but when I put air to it, this just can't be moved. So I'm in love with uh, Chicago pneumatic X series guns. These are rivet guns and they're made to control to the nth degree when you're setting rivets in the wing of an aircraft or the skin of an aircraft. And this is the smallest one, which I really like it. And then this is the next size. And they go all the way up to this guy, which is just beats the hell out of whatever you're going to do with it. Um, but they go in different steps, and the, the step is always the throw of the gun. And you can find them on eBay pretty reasonable, but you want to kind of be careful that it doesn't look too beat up because uh, the insides can get messed up. And uh, you can buy all the parts, like this one I broke the, or one of the, my students broke the uh, hammer that goes back and forth in it, but it there's a place in uh, Seattle that sells them and it was like seven bucks for that little thing it cost more to ship it but uh when you're ever you're doing it you want hearing protection safety glasses but this is a tool that rob gunter kind of got me into and then i kind of got carried away with it but if you look at it uh i don't know if you can see the angle one side is real steep and one side is is uh or vice versa, whatever, one side less of an angle. So what that does is it hits, it push it, upsets the metal in, but it also drives it in one direction. And that gives a really nice look, I think. Um, but you want to keep track of it so that you are hitting the same side. And I always uh, put magic marker on it, but it, it rubs off. But that helps me see that that's the upside. So, this will be noisy. Oh, I like to wear one glove. On the hand that's steering it, which is my left hand, because sometimes you can kind of pinch yourself in the spring. So I come in. I've got this really steep angle at the bottom. So I'm going to push the metal in and up. And I found you want to be 90 degrees or aim at the center of the bowl. Uh, otherwise it'll get choppy. So 
but if you you do it right it's a nice smooth okay so then I now I can move it on the the holder matic Okay, underneath I have a piece of rubber horse stall mat. Uh, it's, uh, I don't have another piece. It, it's real hard rubber. You can buy a whole sheet of it for 30 bucks. Uh, I have it as a cushion in my forging area. The only bad part is if you drop something hot on it, you got to kick it off really because it stinks. But um, it is really good for this because it, kind of grips but as you're going you can see this kind of ridge form and uh, it takes a little bit of watching but you once you get an idea you can follow that ridge all the way around and it'll be real even so that gives kind of a uh, a sharp edge on the top and not as much of an edge on the bottom. If you want this edge to roll over more, you can bring this up. And if you're happy with that, this has little kind of chatter marks, uh, which is kind of cool, but uh, some people wouldn't like it. So I made this bigger one that is pretty much concentric and uh, if you put it in the small gun and go around it it uh, kind of polishes it I mean it gives it almost really hard to see on the camera. There's a place I've discovered it's called the yard store. I've talked about it in the past but it's an aircraft supply and each catalog in the back they have a used and rebuilt section of different guns. You know if you wanted a guaranteed one they're a little more expensive like this is a, a big one but it's 185 bucks but it's been gone through and you know it would work good. I just got mine on eBay. But the cool thing about this place, sorry, I needed these big, massive uh, tools that had a big weight on it because I wanted to grind on them and, and use them f totally different than their intended purpose. Uh, all these. And I called the yard store and I said, you know, you may think I'm nuts, but I'm a blacksmith. I use these aircraft tools for totally un <laughs> purpose. And uh, I was wondering if you had any of the ones that had more mass at the end. And the woman said, well, I'll go upstairs in the surplus section at lunch, and then I'll call you back. And she called me back a couple hours later, and she had found a whole box of American Army surplus stuff. And these things usually cost like, 30 bucks and she she was selling them to me for like seven bucks and I bought you know uh, like a dozen of them but uh, that allows me to have the room to grind in these surfaces you know, they... this is kind of a the shape they come in this one I, I'm using for a big texture this one I just use as an eraser. I just polished it so if I screw up you can go back and forth and it will drive the metal back in and it'll actually erase a screw up on the surface pretty well. So I guess next we'll uh, go ahead and uh, texture the, the back side the way I like to do it which is a pretty heavy texture so this is basically a uh, Lowe's or Harbor Freight style cutter um, 
come in sets for like eight bucks with different ones. And uh, this was a longer one that I cut off. And then uh, if you grind it without getting it hot, it gives you a, a nice hard tool. Um, so I ground these this round and then polished it. And it'll give you a, a real nice, just standard peen texture. I found this one that has the curve on it. If you put some oil on it and put it in the gun, if you're hitting and you rock it like this, it'll spin because it's trying to find its center. So I just keep moving it like this and it, it kind of spins and it gives this real neat kind of Japanese looking cuts in a surface. But it's a little hard to control. So I'm going to go with this guy because it's... Uh, and then these springs are what release and hold the tools in and make it so it doesn't shoot the tool across the room. So when I'm doing this, I, I run either a figure eight or a, uh, a uh, circular motion. Uh, if you go linear, it'll show up as a row of dots and it looks real crappy. So. One thing I discovered is if you hit out of here where it's not supported, it gives a much lighter dent than where it's sitting on the rubber. So you kind of make a choice of where you're going to hit. And another thing I discovered is if you have an old style, I have a screw compressor, so it'll give me 250 pounds all day long. Um, if you have an old style compressor, uh, they'll run up to 120 and you'll get real deep hits and then it'll drop down to about 90 and then it'll kick back on. And I did a big job for uh, Boulder River Ranch and uh, we were using this, this monster uh, and I had it hanging off the crane so I didn't have to support it. And you could see waves as my old compressor used to get lower pressure and then get it would get high pressure and then lower. So I ended up having to rework a lot of those waves out. Um, and that was when I had made done real well on the job. I bought the screw compressor uh, just because I wanted constant pressure air. Yep. I imagine if you had a giant pump That's compressor, important. it would do the same thing. I also have two 80-gallon tanks. One's just sitting in another room, but it fills up, and it smooths out the, the flow. To keep in mind, this is, I would classify as tool abuse, because <laughs> these were designed for setting aluminum rivets in an aircraft and we're beating the shit out of metal with it um, but they seem to be able to take it but you can't you know you are asking it to do what it wasn't designed for um, I used to do I was the main metal guy for Genesis Innovations uh, which is a Loveland based company that does super uh, high-end hotels and uh, residents and stuff and we, we did like Little Nell and we this Boulder River Ranch job was just intense it was all this texture of course he took the hardest texture I made these wheels and one would go the Genesis had a set and I had a set and they have numbers and they are all different textures that I could do uh, and there's the H series, which was all done under the nasal, or uh, uh, the G series, I called it, which is the gun. That's that spinny cutter one. 
I was talking about. Hang earlier. on. But there's just all these different textures, and for some unknown reason, they always chose the gun texture, <laughs> which you make more money on the gun textures, but it's so much more work. Um, so on the inside of the bowl, uh, if it's going to be used for uh, food or anything, you don't want it to have a bunch of big dents. So uh, I like to use the needle gun on it, and I don't use I don't do the whole surface. I just do like the inner surface and maybe the outer surface, and I blend it. And uh, I found you can steer a needle gun uh, with your fingers. You know, I have a, a real big one that puts, you know, more of a dent. And then I have this little one, which is a Harbor Freight. And I got to say, it has held up fantastic. But I've, uh, on jobs, and this one's, it's, they're all ruined, but I cut uh, these, uh, the, whatever you call these, the pins, um, to a sharp point and got a certain texture I wanted. Um, you can buy a box of these, which will fill this one twice for eight bucks. It'll fill this one once at Harbor Freight. And I started, I use them for all kinds of stuff. I have a bin of them and I'll grind the tip and use it for driving rivets out or whatever. But uh, can be real handy. Now with a needle gun, if you come in at an angle, it'll give you little moon shapes. If you go straight, it'll give you a pretty even texture. They both have their niceness in my mind. I also don't come all the way to the edge, and it gives kind of a, a shadowy look that I really like. I would say the noise is over. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, put it in the forge and heat it. This takes a while because you have to keep turning it get a nice even heat. Otherwise, I can show you later, I uh, was doing a bowl and we didn't get an even heat and it actually ripped it. Okay, this, this is a 65 ton press. Um, I put the ring in here and then I have this big presser that allows me to make sure that this is centered. I used to clamp it and everything, but I found out it just doesn't matter. It, it doesn't move around. So basically, I just put this big pusher in just so I could uh, get this centered. I'm going to go with the bear, and we just means we have to have it screaming hot. So now we know this is centered. The bear's in there. When that comes up to temperature, I'll lay it in here and right away come down on it as fast as I can.
sometimes you get little ripples like right here. But you can tap out. As soon as uh, the bowl cools down, I'm going to wire brush it and then we're going to uh, patina it. Um, just a real quick run over some patina stuff. My favorite uh, patina is called Easy Brown by Surefin. It gives a wonderful color on bronze and brass. And when I'm doing my engraving, I like to use it to highlight the engraving on the brass, like on. Uh, the Beeler Award or any of the awards. Um, Surefin is a really good company. They're in LA. Uh, they do, at least last time I ordered, they had a minimum of two bottles. Um, and at, the, at that time they were $29 a bottle. They, I'm sure it's gone up more. Another one I use a lot is called Super Antique 44. And it's just a, just black. But it works really fast unless you super dilute it with water. And it's kind of good when you're going to have a, a deep texture that you want to highlight because it will rub off. Um, my probably favorite all time is, is Japan Brown, which you can get from Sculpt Nouveau. Or if you're cheap like me, it's basically hydrogen peroxide. And you, I get the strongest I can get, which is 3%. Um, and then you just put a few drops of muriatic acid into a container of hydrogen peroxide. The, over here I have two trays. One is the Easy Brown, and then this is the Super Antique uh, mixed with water. And then this is just a water rinse bath. Um, but those are my, oh, there's also, this is a really nice patina that's very durable. It's made by Birchwood Casey. It's called Plum Brown. Um, I used it years and years ago making muzzle loaders, and then uh, was reintroduced to it by David Norrie when I was working at, at his place. Um, it gives a very neat, uh, dark ready brown uh, but you have to bring the the metal up to a temperature so you can just barely hold your hand on it you don't want it to sizzle you want it to steam uh, and then uh, Dave and I would apply it with these sprayers and we, we used to have a couple of guys heating while another guy was spraying and then you go you have to go through after it's all cooled and scrub it with a, a plastic brush and water. Uh, but it's a gorgeous finish and once it's waxed, it's real durable in a house or semi-durable outside. Um, but it's really pretty. Okay, this is a Harbor Freight Cheapy. Uh, as much as I don't like Harbor Freight, I bought this for one job and it's eight or nine years later and it's still works great. It works even better if you turn the air on. <laughs> One thing to keep in mind with a wire brush is the brush doesn't cut coming straight on, it cuts on the sides of the wheel. Uh, it's too compacted. So as you're working on a big wheel like the uh, Arbor mounted one, you work kind of in on the side. On this one I'm working 
at an angle here. I'm not working flat. Also, with a cup wheel, if you're going flat, it's going to try to run in circles. So, I found it just going a little angle is... dip it in and I rub the surface uh, as I'm doing it and that takes off some of the oxides and allows the patina solution to get in better but it will also mess up your patina solution um, I've got this thinned down a whole lot with water, so it's it's slowing it down pretty good. This is your this is the antique, antique. forty four. I try to keep not use the brown for steel much as the oxides get in. You can see how it rubs off on, you know, kind of in there a little. And I like these cheapy green ones. You can get at Harbor Freight because they, they don't, they're not real aggressive. But if you breathe this stuff too much, it'll, it must not, it must be pretty bad the oxides because it makes your cough and it'll always get darker when you wax it I used to use Francis's mixture or that traditional mixture but I kind of got out of it because it the uh Boil linseed oil, even if you keep it closed, it go off and you end up wasting yep. unless you use it really fast. So I take a, these cheapy throwaway brushes and I cut about half of it off so it's stiff. Mm -hmm. And then you can use it to work it, work into the nooks and crannies. And you're just using some kind of paste wax? Yeah, my favorite is tree wax. Um, the, when I used to have my office in our old cabinet shop at Paragon, um, the guys in the shop used tree wax a lot and I asked them why and they said that the carnauba is much harder and holds up much better than, uh, Johnson's paste wax. So... I just have always liked tree wax. You can heat the bowl, warm the bowl up, and then the, it opens the pores. And But I think for the most part this works pretty good. Especially when you're in a hurry. But you can see when you apply the wax, it makes the patina a whole lot darker. Yeah. It's hard to get it on the camera. Yeah. But that's something to keep in mind if you're looking for a certain color. You need to experiment a little ahead of time to know when to stop, what color you're going to stop at, because this uh, will end up being a hair darker. And, you know, most of the time it doesn't matter. But, uh, 
when I worked with Genesis, we had patina samples that were signed by the architect and by us, and then I had to match it exactly. And they would hold the sample up to the piece.